Hi, Natasha. How are you? Hello. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad at all, thank you. Good. What an amazing few days it's been. It's been good. We've almost hit the target and um, we've still got a whole other day left yet, so I think we're going to have to up it. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. I can't believe how much you guys have raised. It's amazing. Yeah, you know, so absolutely, this is just another reminder. If you haven't donated, please do so now. Bit.ly forward slash help the NHS. Get your donations in. Even if you have already donated, do it again. You know, what's what's the tenor to you? You know, it might be a small amount of money. Just donate it and let's make the world a better place. So, should we get started? Yes, let's. Right, can you hear me all all right? Yep. Yep. Okay. S sounds good got some slides i'm just gonna figure out how i do that that little green boy was a share screen should do it yeah perfect perfect okay i'm just going to change this to a slideshow cool so yep. let's rock and roll um so for those of you that don't know me which is probably most of you because i'm quite new to the property game um i thought i'd just start off by sharing a bit about myself and my background um, so previously to property, I worked in finance for 11 years, did numerous roles, um, so branch manager of a high street bank to corporate relationship manager, and I was also a mortgage advisor for three years. So that's very different to being a mortgage broker because you're limited to uh, one lender's lending policy. Um, but I always wanted my own business, I just wanted more time and freedom. I've got a daughter. Um, and when she went to school, it was such a restrictive job. Um, the amount of time that I spent with her was just very minimal. So I wanted my own business, but I thought you'd have to be really creative or innovative and come up with a brand new idea, which I am neither of the above. Um, you'll be able to see from my slides, which are very basic. <laughs> um, but then I discovered how you could create a business through property. And as a mortgage advisor, I thought the only way that you could um, build a property portfolio was to have a really good job, work really hard, save lots of money, and then use that as a deposit to purchase a buy to let and go again. So I, um, I think the first book I read was 44 Property Secrets by Rob Moore. And that actually blew my mind a bit as to how you could create a business through property, through buying, refurbishing, refinancing, properties and working with investors and their money. Um, I was already an accidental landlord. So I purchased my first property in 2008, literally weeks before the housing market crashed. Um, quite naive and oblivious to the housing market and what was going on in the economy as I was 18 years old. Um, so when it came to move in 2014, the property was actually still in negative equity. Um, it was back in the day when you could get a 95% mortgage plus add all of your fees and everything on top so it worked out. We purchased the property for 144000 um, and the mortgage was 142000 so it did take quite a while for it to um, get back to that value that we purchased it at in 2008. Um, so already an accidental landlord and then I started educating myself with books podcasts, attending all the free webinars that I could do, um, but officially kick-started my journey in property in March 2019 when I did my training with Progressive. Um, so what do I do now? So now I'm full-time in property. I resigned from my job um, in December 2019, so de December just gone. I did take a year career break um, from December 2018 to December 2019 to focus on property because I knew that's what I wanted to do after edu educating myself. I wanted to give myself a year to try and replace my income um, and that's what I managed to do. So handing in my resignation was a really big achievement. So I do specialise in buying, refurbishing and refinancing single lets in Peterborough, which is where I'm based, born and bred here lived here my whole life and being a mortgage advisor here really helped me to sort of understand the property values and the market um, rent values before I started investing myself. I've also got a small rent to rent service accommodation business but that is just on the side um, of my single lets are, are my main priority in building a portfolio and I'm a mum of my seven-year-old daughter there she is in the corner Lila she's my big why 
um, and obviously taking up a lot of my time at the minute with uh, homeschool and being on lockdown. So my achievements over the last 12 months, well it's just over 12 months now, I've a portfolio of single lets with a total value of a million pounds. That is the pre-corona value, so we'll see how, how much that drops um, given what's going on in, in the current climate and what's going to happen with the housing market. I do anticipate um, a price correction um, most definitely. I've also got one flip, so this was going to be my first property that I've ever sold because I've never sold a property to date. Um, but given the current climate, it would probably be a, a single let for about two years and then I'll look to sell it on um, once the house prices have recorrected themselves. Um, in the last 12 months, I've raised £480,000 in investor finance. So this has been a mixture through uh, family, business networking, investors, and investors through the um, through property communities. Um, and another big achievement of mine was that I won the, the Progressive Property VIP Newcomer of the Year Award in 2019 um, for my successes. This is very bizarre, by the way, talking to myself with, <laughs> with no interaction, but uh, keep going. So why do I love BRR and this strategy? So I like the simple life and uh, single lets by refurbished refinance is very simple. It's a lot more uncomplicated than other investment strategies. Once you've sort of cracked the, the process and the refurb, um, it's something that you can rinse and repeat quite quickly and quite simply. Not only do you get your uh, cash flow, which I know isn't as high as other strategies, um, but you're also building wealth through capital appreciation and building equity, which hedges against inflation. Um, I want to leave a legacy for my daughter and hopefully the portfolio that I create will be passed down to her. And if done properly, um, I truly believe that, that property investing can benefit the community. One of our aims um, as a company is to really increase the standard of the private residential sector in Peterborough. Um, so we want to create beautiful, modern, comfortable homes for our tenants that look after it as if it's their own home and want to stay there for as long as possible. And it is a fairly passive income. So I, I don't think any investment strategy is completely passive, um, but it is one of the most passive strategies, um, which is my why is to have more time and more freedom. So eventually going forward I don't want to be working as much as I am or would have to do in other strategies. Okay so I thought I'd talk a bit about joint ventures and why you work with investors and how it's helped me on my journey. I know we've had a presentation already about joint ventures and I'm not going to go into that much detail at all um, but just more around the mindset. So why would people work with investors? When I got started, um, after educating myself and realising that I should be spending money on assets that appreciate rather than liabilities that depreciate, I sold my car because I'd lost £4,000 in the first year of the ownership. So I sold my car and refinanced my house, which gave me £40,000 pop to get started. Um, but I do know a lot of people who have said, actually, it's easier to start working with investors and raising finance with investors if you've got no money because you if you've got a pot it gives you that sort of that that comfort blanket whereas if you've got nothing you've got no other choice than to get out there and, and get meeting of investors um, so obviously even if you have got a sizable pot at some point you will most probably run out of money some people don't want to use their money their own money which is completely fine um, whether it's in just sat in the bank or in stocks and shares, um, you are helping investors make money as well. So that's something to just bear in mind. You can reduce your own financial risks and obviously banks don't lend the full amount of purchases and it enables you to scale a lot quicker when working with investors and having numerous projects on the go at the same time. Um, so the different types of JV structures. So the way that I've worked with investors today is on straightforward loan agreements. I'll go into a bit more detail on that in uh, the next slide, I think it is. But you can so work with investors on straightforward loan agreements, on straightforward joint ventures. So you own a company 
or you purchase them in your personal names 50 50. Um, it can be a mortgage host so if for any reason uh, you can't get mortgage whether that's income related or credit via related you can find a, a joint venture partner who would be the mortgage host for you so they purchase the property and they have the mortgage in their name but you have a deed of trust alongside that which um, is your sort of assurance that you own 50% of the property or whatever the agreement is. You can also do a one for you, one for me sort of structure where the investor will, will fund the purchase of the property and you'll take turns owning it in your name or your company and the investor's name or the investor's company um, or top and tail. So for some people they have a higher priority is um, cash flow and others is, is capital growth and equity and property. So you might find a partner who um, wants 75% of the equity or the capital appreciation and you have 75% of, of the cash flow. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you can uh, create joint venture structures. I think it's all about creating a win-win um, with your investor. So like I said, I've worked with all of my investors on a straightforward loan agreement basis. I find it a lot easier um, clean, straightforward way to work with investors. So we borrow money on um, a fixed interest rate return. So generally we, we pay between six and 10%, depending on the loan amount and how long it's lent for. Um, usually we borrow uh, the funds over six to 12 months, but going forward, that's something that we're going to review and possibly look at borrowing it over a longer period of time in case the housing prices do take uh, a while to recover um, after Corona. You're also not affected by the FCA PS133 regulations. So this is, a, I think it's an 84 page document that you can read all about the regulations for um, investments. If you don't do it as a straightforward loan agreement and you are looking for a, a joint venture, they have to be either a friend's family, a high net worth individual or sophisticated investor for you to market the deal for them. If you're doing it just as a loan agreement, that doesn't apply, but there are some other regulations that apply. Um, so you can't advertise uh, the, the loan that you're looking for. You can't advertise it as a guaranteed return. You can't say things like beat the bank return better than the banks um, or give any advice. But I do suggest anyone that's gonna look at working with investors to have a read through this document. It is, um, quite a challenge to get through all 84 pages and some areas are quite grey um, but just so you've got a basic understanding and can cover yourself. If you work with investors on a straightforward loan agreement basis there is no requirement although some people might want to uh, get into bed with investors so you're not opening a business etc with them um, and you have full control over your business the property purchases the investor literally lends the money to your business and your business account so you're not required to have a client account okay so this is what I would say are the four key steps to my success that's all I'm doing today is sharing my journey obviously I'm not one of the speakers that have got uh, a wealth of experience but I just wanted to share my journey to give my um, advice and opinion on on what has helped me so definitely knowledge and educate yourself. For me, knowing that I was going to be working with investors and investor finance, I had to ensure that I was educated and I knew um, exactly what I was purchasing. So I didn't want to risk losing anybody's money. I wanted to be confident in my deal analysis, in my refurb estimations, um, and I think having the knowledge and educating yourself will most definitely give you the confidence. Mindset is something that's been spoken about quite a lot over these last couple of days. And I am going to briefly speak about it um, with regards to your money mindset, um, which is something I had to work on quite a bit at the beginning for myself. But that, again, changing my mindset as to I am helping investors make money hands free. Um, rather than I am looking for money to build a portfolio, really did help um, sort of unlock the switch in my mindset for me. 
And obviously network, you have got to network as much as possible and get yourself out there, get known for what you do in the area that you invest um, and just tell everybody how you can help them. So like I said, I was going to speak briefly around mindset. So scared to raise finance, which a lot of people I speak to are quite scared to raise finance and I completely get that. Um, it wasn't that long ago that I felt scared to raise finance as well and thought raising finance is difficult. But like I said, as soon as you switch, um, switch your mindset to you are actually there to serve your investors. So you are there to help your investors make money and off the back of helping your investors make money, you're going to make money yourself. Um, also with regards to purchasing properties, um, you, you are a property problem sol solver. So your other service is to purchase properties from people who have a property problem. Um, so expand your beliefs on money, which is something I um, have spent quite a bit of time on. Wealthy people spend money to save time because time is their most important asset. Whereas poor people spend time to save money. So it's just having different views on money and what's more important to them. So for me now, time is more important, um, which is why I've stuck with a strategy that allows me to have more time um, than other more complicated ones, which don't. And then position yourself, your time and your knowledge as just as valuable as the money. Try not to pedestalize. That's a word I really struggle with. Try not to pedestalize your money, the money too much. Because you are spending your time to learn, to educate, to become knowledgeable. You're going to find the deal and it's going to take quite a few viewings before you actually find the deal. So you're going to be viewing quite a few properties, analysing quite a few properties, offering on quite a few properties before you actually finally find a deal that you're then ready to present to investors. Um, you're going to negotiate the deal. You're going to deal with all the legals and the conveyancing process, deal with finance if you need bridging finance alongside investor finance. Um, you're going to manage the refurb, the tradesmen, pay the invoices. The list goes on and on and then deal with finding the tenants or liaise with the letting agent if you're going to use a letting agent and then eventually deal with uh, refinance of the property investors just have to put the money in which is the easy bit um, obviously it is important because without the money you're not going to be able to get the deal but this is just to help you switch your mindset and and not be desperate for the money and obviously the investor does have have a risk as with all investments risks are involved so what makes you investable um, when I first started I listened to a good book called I think it's called uh, attracting armchair investors or something like that I'll find the name and post it in the comments for you guys um, but it was a really good book and it had a exercise which I'd done um, where you had to write a list of 30 reasons why you are investable. And it took me probably about an hour to come up with 30 reasons to put pen to paper, because um, I'm not one of those people that sort of is very confident and bigs up myself a lot. So to really think hard about 30 reasons why someone would invest with me um, was quite a challenge, but seeing those 30 reasons on a bit of paper and I put that bit of paper up on my office wall so I saw it every single day really helped um, with my confidence so it could be anything like uh, experience from previous jobs so if you were a project manager or you were in finance or you were an estate agent or you were a tradesman whatever it is um, just really dig deep into yourself and you need to add things like you're trustworthy you're honest you're organized you're this you're that just keep going until you've got those 30 things um, on pen to paper and keep it somewhere where you can see on a regular basis and so make it really visual in your life. Some people just believe in you. They know, like, and trust you. Um, I know it takes, I can't remember how many touch points, but quite a few touch points for someone to, to build that trust and to um, build that relationship in order to invest in you but some people just generally believe in you and it's not difficult to make money the difficult is in your mind so this mindset piece should really help 
because it's all about the fear of failing and that is something I struggle with a lot being a bit of a perfectionist um your network okay so you've probably all heard the saying your network is your net worth um for me this is really how you're going to find your investors so whether you're networking online face to face when we're allowed to do that um or over social media just really spend as much time as possible networking um and it should be split between building relationships with agents so going out and visiting agents face to face building relationships with investors other business owners in your local area um, and your power team members and surround yourself with uh, people that are smarter than you so learn from them and thrive from them be inspired and motivated make can't get the words out motivated by them and remember these key things um, you making money is a result of helping other people make money so helping investors make money pedestalize yourself as you are the one making the money and obviously at the minute the interest rates are so low it does make it easier to to help investors because Back in the days when you could get 6% with your money sat in the bank account, it would have been a lot harder to get them to invest in a property where there's obviously more risk um, for, for not a greater return. But now at the minute with bank rate being 0.1%, if you can give them 6% return on their money, that's 60 times the, the Bank of England base rate, which is just incredible. And with it sat in the bank account, it's gonna depreciate against inflation. Um, so they are actually gonna lose money with it just sat there over time. The stock markets are really volatile and they've taken some poundings over the last few weeks, gone down to levels from 1991. So why not help them get their money into something safe like bricks and mortar, hands-free using your time, your knowledge and your expertise. And also just another point that the uh, bank obviously only protect 85,000 pounds per account per bank or building society. Okay, so I thought I'd speak a bit about what types of properties do I buy, because I was asked this question um, after someone watched my video. So for me, um, really focusing on my deal criteria helped a lot. When I was first going out and meeting agents and introducing myself and trying to build relationships with them, I would get phone calls and emails about every single new property that they were taking on the market. So whether that be uh, a £250,000 beautiful house or a studio flat, which was not something that I was looking to buy. So I created a one page, um, I'm just gonna hide myself because I keep checking. There we go, oh no. Um, I created a one page deal criteria, which I gave to the agents with my business cards to really help them understand the types of properties that I was wanting to buy. And that in turn meant that I wasn't getting all these phone calls and emails about properties, which really, really didn't fit my criteria. So my criteria and what I generally focus on is ex-local authority, three to four bedroom properties in Peterborough. Um, so the three to four bedroom properties are only slightly higher than the two bedroom properties, but the rental income that you get from a three to four, three or four bed is significantly higher than the rental income you get from a two bed. And in the areas that we look to buy, majority of properties are three bed properties minimum. They are, um, they're all terraced or semi-detached properties. And I have six specific areas in Peterborough where I really focus my marketing on um, and focus building the, um, focus with the agents on. So although I don't exclude other areas, there's six main areas that I really focus on. Um, so if you think of a scale of one to 10 and one being the Bronx and 10 being Manhattan, you want to look at buying properties within the three to four scale, just because that's where you're gonna get your better yields and your better return on investments. In Peterborough, we look to buy um, at least 7% yield. Generally, they're between seven and 8% in Peterborough and our purchase price of less than 135. This just helps with the income ratios and the stress tests that the mortgage lenders do. 
and we always want to ensure that there's local schools and a bus route to the city centre because our target market for our clients are families. Okay, so this is one of our uh, projects from last year. Um, it's only called Project 86 because that's the door number. I've not got 86 properties yet. Um, this property took five months from my first offer to when the vendor finally accepted my cash offer. Um, so it's really, really important that you do create like a, um, a deal pipeline. So whether that be just an Excel spreadsheet or you use a CRM system, a deal pipeline where you can input all the details of the properties that you view, what agent they're with, what offers you make, some notes about the property and something that you go back to and check on a regular basis. So I check my deal pipeline on a weekly basis to see if any properties have fallen through or if they've been on um, sold subject to completion for quite a long period of time, then I'll get in contact with the agent and just see what's going on with the conveyancing process. Um, but this property came on and off the market. So it sold three times and fell through three times and then the vendor finally accepted my offer. The reason for it falling through um, was when it got to valuation stage and the lenders um, did not like the property for one re reason or another. So there was a few different reasons and, and lenders just didn't like one of them or the other. Um, some didn't like the timber cladding on the front. Some didn't like the fact it wasn't deemed habitable because the boiler was condemned. The uh, vendor was overseas based in Jersey. So a lender didn't like that. Um, so then finally, five months later, the, um, the vendor accepted my cash offer. And this is probably the smelliest property I have bought to date. Um, the vendor had, well, the vendor's tenants, the previous tenants had 33 ferrets, nine cats and three dogs. So it absolutely stunk. Um, but like they say, you want the properties that smell like we? And this one certainly did. Um, the pictures don't quite do it justice, just how bad it was. And these are the after pictures. So like I said, I generally use the same kitchen flooring, um, just gray, white, something that we can rinse and repeat quite quickly. Sometimes I'll get a bit bored and change the color of the kitchen doors, um, but that's generally about as far as, as I vary it. Um, that was that. These are the figures. So we purchased this property for £115,000. Um, the refurb was quite a big refurb. It obviously needed a new boiler. We had to replace a few windows. Um, the garden was an absolute mess. And then full cosmetic work inside, new kitchen, new bathroom, flooring and decorating. And our total cost came to £131,650. The property was valued, um, it was about three months after purchase. There is an unspoken rule um, that you can't refinance your property until six months of ownership. But if you purchase the property cash, there are, well, for us buying in a limited company now, there are um, about four or five lenders that will lend uh, with less than six months ownership. So Fleet will lend from day one, Paragon will lend from um, when it's on land registry um, so it is possible to refinance quicker and that's something I did want to do the interest rates were slightly higher um, but it just meant that we could recycle the money and um, scale quicker because I'd give myself this one year to replace my income um, so the monthly ca cash flow on this project um, just move this out the way so I can see the figures yeah, so this one rents for £750, um, lettings fee 10% and mortgage insurance. And then we all, always put 10%, so 5% for voids and 5% for maintenance away in a separate account um, just for emergencies. Um, so that cash flows us net cash flow of £305.49. Okay, here's another property. Um, so this one we've just completed uh, the refurb. This was a, I know I said I buy mainly three to four beds. This is one of the two two bed properties that we do have um, just because it was a good deal. So I didn't want to turn it away. 
who purchased this property for £60,000 and this was a post auction buy. I did try to buy it prior to auction. Um, it was on for an agent with an agent for a while. Excuse me, I put in three offers, uh, all rejected, and then they decided to put the property to auction. I put it, I um, got in contact with the estate agent again and, and just offered my third and final offer again. And they said no, they wanted to hold out for um, the auction. So I actually purchased this post auction at a lower price than what my third and final offer was. Um, so that's quite good. Uh, I think the reason this one didn't sell was because there was only 43 years left on the lease and the vendor for some reason just wouldn't agree to submit a section 42. So what section 42 is, is a notice that the, um, that the leaseholder gives to the freeholder um, to request extension of the lease. And generally you can only do that if you've owned the property for two years. So lots of people didn't want to buy this property, which had to be cash because you couldn't get mortgage with a lease with 43 years left. They didn't want to buy a property cash that they couldn't then refinance within for at least another two years till the lease extension had, um, had gone through. But I managed to get in contact with the freeholder directly. He was a really lovely gentleman um, and we agreed to to extend the lease um, as soon as I'd completed on the property. So we'd done a, a lease agreement um, prior to exchange because we had a few days negotiating post auction. Um, we'd done a lease agreement, he agreed. I mean, who wouldn't want to agree to a premium, a lease extension premium of £21,000? I don't know, but he agreed to that. So as soon as we completed on the property, the lease was extended by 90 years. The premium was £21,000 and then I had to pay for the freeholder's legal fees and our own legal fees too. Um, this was quite a big refurb for a two bed maisonette because there was some issues with um, the roof and also the there's a balcony, I don't know if you can see just uh, where the brick wall is, there's a balcony there and we wasn't aware that there was an issue with the balcony causing damage to the uh, flat below. Um, so yeah, the refurb did go slightly over what we expected, but that is part of property and you can't always establish um, all the issues for with the property until you get started with the refurb. Um, so the total cost was £98,300. We had this property valued two days before lockdown, before the official lockdown. Um, so as I opened the door to the surveyor, he was like, I just need to ask you, have you got any symptoms, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we actually managed to get the physical valuation done. And that was six weeks of ownership. So we'd completed and refurbed the property within six weeks. And I always start the mortgage application process when we've got about two weeks left of the refurb, just so we can keep it going as quickly as possible. Um, I was hoping for an end valuation of £130,000 on this, but given the current circumstances, I do think they were being a bit conservative and they gave us a value of £120,000, um, which was fine. Happy to proceed on that. But then, uh, given what's going on in the current climate, the lender decided to pull all lending over 60% loan to value. So they would only offer us 60% of this uh, of £120,000. So we have decided now to proceed with another lender um, who's still currently lending 75% loan to value and we'll just see how we get on with that one. Hopefully it goes a bit better um, than with Fleet. So this property we rent, the flat is already rented to our plumber actually. Um, so he pays £600 per calendar month. He didn't need access to the garage because he's already got uh, lock up storage. So we've rented the garage out separately for £75 per month uh, to another um, tradesman who's using it to, to store storage, um, store materials, sorry. The mortgage and costs we're estimating based on um, our agreement and principle with the new lender we've submitted an application with and then taking the 10% off for voids and maintenance means it cash flows roughly £348 per month.
So my main challenges um, over the last 12 months, really the first sort of two months maybe were the most difficult because you're going out there and you're um, trying to build relationships with agents that you've not had any sort of connection with before. Um, you're over analysing your deals. You're probably a bit more conservative with your refurb estimates, um, therefore making the deals not quite stack up. And yeah, just finding that first deal was a big challenge and it sort of knocks you down every time you go and you you analyze the deal and it stacks in, with your offers and then you put your offers through and it they're just not accepted so finding the first deal was a challenge for me and what i done because i had my own pot of money i decided to reduce my criteria from getting well trying to get all of our money back out to um only trying to get 50 percent back out um it worked out that i got 70 percent back out in the end but that just I just wanted to get going and something had to give because I knew I had given myself such a short period of time frame to replace my income being on my career break um I, I was I was comfortable to do that and like I said I knew then I'd run out of money and that would give me the motivation to get going with investors as well um shiny penny syndrome um yeah that's that's a big distraction when you're getting start, started for sure um especially with single lets i think because because single lets aren't uh the most high high cash flowing strategy it's not the most sexiest exciting strategy it can quite become quite boring i was distracted by other things and in the first two months i was probably viewing anything and everything, whether it be commercial conversions, HMOs, plots of land, anything and everything, I was wasting my money going out and viewing and um, analysing the deals and, and wasting the agent's time as well. So I actually went on to one of Jackie Tomes who spoke yesterday, one of her strategy courses, and she really helped me to focus on, um, on why I was getting into property in the first place and create uh, an action plan and, and a strategy to um, meet my goals and go forward. And that really took the shiny penny away. My focus was single lets for the first six months and that is it. So I would say try and choose one strategy and focus it on it until successful, most definitely. Um, confidence, confidence is something um, I think most people struggle with especially being an introvert, doing something like this is absolutely terrifying, but I just had to keep pushing myself out there. I remember going to my first networking event in November 2018. So this was before I had done any of my own, um, any of my paid property education. Uh, and I was sat in the car for about half an hour trying to convince myself to go and, and start networking. Um, so that's, something I've definitely had to push myself sort of out, out of my comfort zone. But like I say, that's when you grow, is when you, when you release yourself and allow yourself to, to be in uncomfortable positions. Um, and telling everyone what you did, what I did, oh, go back, sorry. Telling everyone, everybody what I did was quite um, a challenge in the first few months as well, because I, Sometimes I'd still tell people that was a mortgage advisor, even though I wasn't doing mortgages and hadn't been, been doing mortgages for a good few months. But it was the the lack of confidence and the stigma of um, saying I was a property investor and probably the lack of, of knowledge as well, um, which is why I say it's so important to educate yourself and, and be knowledgeable. So that in turn gives you the confidence to to shout it from the rooftops what you do and how you can help people um, make money from money that's sat in the bank earning next to nothing or how you can help people by buying their property if they've got a problem property. And my final challenge was going from a corporate nine to five job to working from home by myself um, with very little structure initially. Um, so this is something I am still trying to work on to date because I find property quite a, a proactive business for me personally 
if you get a lead come in from one of your marketing or if you get um, one of your agents phone you and say, we've just taken on this, this new property, do you want to come and view it before it goes to the market? You have to be quite reactive. So for me, structuring my day in time blocks was quite difficult, but that is something I am now getting very close to cracking, I feel, using um, like Google calendars and, and, and time blocking out sections of my day. But obviously, if an agent was to phone me or if a lead was to come through, I would um, take it on. My top tip, something I've already spoken about, educate yourself as much as possible. Every day is a learning day and property is such a um, varied business. So it, it's impossible to know everything, I think, anyway. And tell everyone what you do, literally shout it from the rooftops, whether you're telling a person sat next to you on the train or um, a colleague that you work with. The only way you're going to um, be successful and attract investors is by telling everybody how you can help them. Talk about money and don't be British. Um, I think that's quite a British thing. A lot of people are uncomfortable talking about money but it's something you've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable doing most definitely um don't compare yourself to others this is a really difficult one especially with so much on social media but you've just got to remember that everybody is on their own page of their own chapter of their own book or whatever the saying is um just focus on your journey and and obviously use use people's um, experience and people who are further ahead in their journey use what they share um, to motivate you and to inspire you but try your best not to compare yourself to others because that can really get you down for me having a mentor um, definitely helped with my success he pushed me over and above and outside of my comfort zone a million times and without the accountability and the support from my mentor, I definitely don't think I would have um, achieved what I achieved in a short period of time. Network as much as possible and just try and stay focused and enjoy the journey. Yeah, so these are my golden rules. Enjoy the journey, have fun. Um, that's all you can do and try and not focus too much around the end goal, just try and enjoy what you're achieving and what you're experiencing at that moment in time. Work on your psychology and beliefs around money, create a supportive environment. That's really key, especially for a lot of people, they have negativity around them, whether that's a family member or a partner or a colleague or a friend. Um, I think having that supportive environment and that sort of property community around you will really help you keep going during the difficult times. Focus on your long-term visions and goals, things like um, what they called your vision boards. That really helps. Uh, just yeah, I think one of the main things coming out of this is is to just focus and know why you're doing this. And I still have to bring myself back to this sometimes when I get distracted um, and I'm not feeling very focused. Is to go back to my why. So if you haven't done already, I'd really suggest write down your why and what, what it is you want to achieve from property. So you find your motivation and you never give up because the only way you're going to fail is by giving up. There's obviously going to be uh, bumps and quite big bumps along the journey because property is such a high and low um, it's such a high and low journey. So you can be so excited and so buzzing that you've just agreed a new deal or you've just onboarded a new investor to then, um, am I running over time? I just see your face now, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you're still, yeah, still good. Uh, okay. Yeah, you've got, you've got a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, cool, I'm nearly done. Um, yeah, so whatever I was saying there. Focus on one strategy until you master it. Again, going back to the focus and create a deal criteria and try to stick to it as much as possible because that will help you, that will help your agents and that will help investors as well. And of course, what this is all about, if you haven't already, please donate because we would love to absolutely smash this 10,000 pound target by the end of the day. Uh, Any more? Oh, one last thing. Myself and Joshua were actually planning on launching our own property networking event 
So this was meant to be launched in April. It was going to be a really cool, uh, trendy networking event. Our aim was to get, um, it was going to be like a power team sort of networking event, wasn't it? And we were going to have agents there, property solicitors, property finance people, uh, brokers, tradesmen. Our aim was to create like a, yeah, a power team network, I think. Um, we found a really cool venue in Peterborough. Um, yeah, so it was a bit, a bit of a shame really that we couldn't launch it in April as we were planning to do. But what we have decided to do is to start online and it's going to be more of a, a mastermind sort of event. We're hoping to get a few of the speakers that have spoken over these three days holding some mastermind events. And for anybody who donates £5, so that's another £5 now. If you've already donated, please donate another £5. We will give you a free ticket to our first launch event, which is going to be held on the 21st of May. Did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, absolutely. So 21st of May, um, it's probably going to be held on, on Zoom um, or another kind of software that you have had to register. Um, and we have small rooms with each of the different kind of experts in the area. Um, so you've got the master kind of round table style thing. Um, so anybody who donates an extra five pounds, forward the emails. That's be a new five pounds. Oh, I will look at the time it's been donated. So if you did it this morning, sorry, you've got to do it again. Forward it to me, Joshua at jsmpartners.co.uk, because um, we're only actually five hundred, um, five hundred fifty-five pound away from hitting the ten thousand pound target. Um, so I think there's there's no reason why we we can't do this today, um, and then tomorrow we can raise even more over and above. Um, so everybody get that in. It will be a fantastic event. If you've enjoyed this, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be great. So do that. Joshua at jsmpartners.co.uk, £5, put in the subject line, the property meet, and let's make it happen. Cool. Perfect. Thank you very much for your presentation. That was great. I've actually got quite a few notes written down. Um, do we, have, we don't have time for a couple of questions. What we'll do is a couple of questions in the feed. Um, if you're happy just to look at those and comment if you can um, that'd be fantastic but th thank you very much for your time that was a great presentation um perfect okay cool enjoy the rest of the weekend guys take care and stay safe yeah bye thank you for having me